Hello everyone and welcome to the advanced speed solving tutorial for Melinda's 2x2x2x2 Rubik's uh, Tesseract puzzle. So if you don't know what this is or how to solve it, check out my um, beginner tutorial video link in the description below. Um, it's super cool, I teach all the basics and like how, how this is actually a four dimensional puzzle or represents one at least with all the canonical moves that you can use. And it solves exactly like the virtual um, 2x2x2x2 does and it's pretty much just amazing. I love this puzzle and we're gonna go into some advanced speed solving tips in this video. So I currently have like the world record unofficial definitely um, for speed solving this, um, but it's pretty fun. I think my personal best is a minute 11 or something, and I'm hoping to get the first sub one soon if I just keep on grinding and, and practicing. And it seems like a bunch of fun. So again, if you um, don't know what like four dimensional puzzle means, just check out the first like couple minutes of my beginner's tutorial. I explain about the canonical moves and how it's a four dimensional puzzle what the pieces are. There's Each piece has four stickers. Each piece has 12 orientations. Um, it's pretty much just this, but with another spatial dimension, but then projected down and the moves are different and stuff. But we're just gonna jump right in. So let's just get a scramble going. And this is a cool scrambling technique where you basically just rotate these like randomly, kind of like dice or die, I guess is the plural, not dices, dice. Okay, whatever. Anyway, and then you just do like a U2. Then you stack the left to the right and that puts the puzzle in this like inverted state, but it still results in um, legal states, even though it's like using illegal moves, but it's just like a fast, cool way to scramble the puzzle. So I'll just keep doing this, I guess, for a bit. Alrighty, so here is the scramble and step zero is pretty much the step that we do in inspection. It's the same from the first method, but I have some additional tips. So we're going to count how many corners are oriented into these spots, which is actually like this is the left side stickers and this is the right side stickers. They're kind of facing outwards where like the corner of the corner piece is on this, I guess. And you want to count opposite colors as the same. So red, orange, they're going to be the same. Pink, purple is the same. White, yellow is the same. Green, blue is the same. Because we're kind of going to, um, we're going to orient it sort of like this so that one color is oriented, but one axis because we're treating the opposite colors as the same color. So just sort of like that. Keep that in mind for the future. When you're counting, you don't have to like look at the entire thing. You can just systematically look at these, like just these spots and then these eight spots and it's really fast. So I like to count red orange first. So I'll look at the, the D cell. So these two, so that's two, none there. This one and not this one. So this one is oriented. So that's like three and then four. And then there's five, so we can't use it because we're looking for something with, with four colors or less, and hopefully it is four colors, because four colors is the best case, as I'll explain later. All right, let's just count um, blue-green now. So nothing here, nothing there, nothing there, two there, so that's two, nothing there, one there, that's three, one there, that's four. So green-blue, four, I love that. We're gonna start with green-blue, because there's four. Um, if you count something that is four, and then you start going, and then it actually turns out to be five later, um, like, just don't count them wrong at the beginning of the solve, and you should be all good. Okay, so um, what you want to do is find a pair, and these are super common because there's just so many pieces that it's kind of likely that there will be a pair. If there's not a pair, there's a pair that you can probably make in, like, one move, which is also pretty cool. Um, is there any pairs, like, inside here? Okay, there's a pair there. That's, that's great to know. And we're going to do this step similar to, like, step um, three, I guess. Uh, we want to build a layer, so we're going to pair up another pair. This pair is here, but the pair is like not in a oriented pseudo layer, except with green blue instead of um, red orange. So the original pair is here. So we'll just do a UZ2 and that'll bring these pairs here. And we can just um, smack the pairs together and that's the layer. Now that you have a layer and that's super easy, only takes a few moves. Just rotate the bottom like this and we're holding the puzzle in the vertical position the whole time here. Now your um, green blue oriented layer is gonna be on the left. And you're gonna want to do the same thing with the pair. So we already have a pair there. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, and let's see, so there's this blue one down here. So if I were to just bring this um, pair in, cause this is actually like a weird triplet thing, then this two would go there and then this one would come there and they'd be opposite. But I can do something smart here, which is I'll bring this pair down. That way when this comes up, it, it makes another pair. So even though this layer's on the left, we're just bringing this pair down because we can pair up the pairs later. And as you can see, it paired up that pair. So we'll just rotate the pair like this. And now with an R2, that pairs up those pairs. 
And now we have two layers, so we simply pair up the layers just like that. So I'm using the same strategy that's in like step three of this method, the Luna method, um, in order to do it like faster and stuff. All right, and now that um, that's done, step one's done, we've kind of oriented this cell, we're gonna uh, re, now we're gonna hold the puzzle in the horizontal position with the oriented layers facing inside, outside on the W axis here. And now because we have those four corners that are on the uh, left, one, two, three, four, uh, we need to make a layer with the other four corners. Um, well, I'll pair up these using RKT in one move, just like that. And then let's see, we have one there and one there. Perfect, we can just do a U2 here to bring, and then pair up these to make a layer just like this. And there we go. So now we have three layers done. And this is why I like this case. So this is the case where you have um, four on, on the left here that are oriented, that are not oriented. So then we just do the gyro algorithm. And then we're left with um, this case. And how we do this is we set it up into an H case. We were orienting green, blue, and then we have green, blue here and here. The H case, instead of using the algorithm that's like this, which takes a long moves, or God forbid this algorithm, if we don't care about where the green, blue end up going for this um, case, it's called the H case, it's literally just three moves to orient it. So it's R2, U2, and then any R move. And that's just awesome. So there's a bunch of these um, shorter OLL algs. It's called the Guimon method for, for 2 by 2 um, Essentially, you do the same thing. You pretty much make a layer with either like opposite colors like this. And then because you don't have to care about the separation, the algorithms are shorter. So this soon case that I would normally do the seven move soon algorithm for, there's a five move algorithm for it that's like two moves shorter. So if you want to learn that, you can. I've only learned um, H, T, and Pi so far. I haven't bothered learning the other ones because it only saves like two moves, but technically that could be like the line between world record and not world record. So might as well learn those. Anyway, so here we are back on the two by two by two by two. And we just need to set this up into an H case because moving these around won't matter because they're on the outside. So we'll just do an R2. And then here's where I do a cool weird regrip like this to bring it like this. And that way I can just um, slide that up with another R2 with RKT. And now we have our H case on the W axis here, but then we'll just gyro. And then I know that after I gyro, I'll have to um, rotate like this, like a, like a Y move at the same time that I do a Z move to the right side, because I don't want to do RKT to like mess up my green blue orientation. So basically it's sort of like this at the same time, which I just find so fun to execute. And then we'll just do the three move algorithm for this H case. So that's R2, U2, and then I just like to do R. And there we go. Now we'll just do the gyro algorithm. And here we are. So in the old um, version of the method that I was using, you'd basically make like solved pairs to pair up a layer, to pair up another layer that would solve a whole cell. And then you'd use RKT to just completely solve the whole cell. But we found some cooler stuff. So introducing an algorithm set called PBLBC, or as it was previously known um, from Connor Lindsay as PAL, which stands for permuting all layers, but mine stands for permuting both layers of both cells. Because you know in the Ortega method, when you've oriented two layers and then you have to permute both layers simultaneously using algorithms, that's what we're gonna do. Except guess what? There's four layers and crazy parity and stuff and it's awesome and a bunch of fun. So let's look for the pairs. There's, there's this pair and I also noticed this pair. So we would just pair up the pairs, kind of self-explanatory, this um, blue and these blue white corners. And the good thing about this is it speeds up recognition because you're only looking for two colors. Whereas before with the other methods, you'd have to look for the whole piece, which is four colors to pair up four colors with a certain four colors, but you're only caring about two colors, the white and the blue in this case. So once that's paired up, um, you kind of just rotate and then we'll pair up the um, blue yellow corners. So this one's here, I'll just bring it down oriented with yellow on the bottom. And then this one will just rotate up so that they pair up. Perfect. And then the other one is there and the other other one is there. So that's awesome. So we'll just bring that down 
And now we can just use RKT to pair these up. So I see I can do this in two moves, sort of like this. And you don't have to worry about these at all because we want to just solve a color, kind of like a layer thing. Then we'll just pair up the pairs to make a layer, but it's an unpermuted layer because we'll permute it later with the cool algorithm set. The algorithm set's still in development, by the way. I'll, I'll talk more about it later. Anyway, now we just want to orient um, two different colors. So um, we already did white yellow, so let's just do white yellow again. So I'll um, rotate like this so that I don't mess it up with RKT. We'll pair those up just like this. And then let's see, more yellows here and here. Okay, so that's R prime, U prime, R2. Perfect. And then we have this case. So I'll just do an algorithm for that. And then here we are at the step of permuting four layers at once. It's It sounds pretty crazy, but it's actually not too bad. It's only like kind of bad, but it's like fun bad, you know? Connor Lindsay develops like almost all of the algorithms. So I've kind of been using those and optimizing them or finding different ones and different solutions. And also solutions for avoiding RKT parity too. That's kind of fun sometimes. Uh, but essentially you want it in the um, upright position. So like this then you wanna see what layers you have from top to bottom. So we have um, adjacent. This is the adjacent, cause two need to swap. Opposite is when two need to swap like oppositely. And then solved is if it's just solved. So we have an adjacent swap here, then an adjacent swap, then an adjacent swap here, and then finally an opposite swap. So we have A, 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 O, and that's how you read the case names. So I believe there is um, not an algorithm for this currently at the moment. So we'll just line up these bars as best we can. Um, where this bar go? Okay, so that's there. So now we have these three bars, which is good enough because if we do the case for adjacent, 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 even though this is the opposite, it'll do an adjacent swap to the opposite layer, which will make it into an adjacent swap, and then we can just solve that adjacent swap with RKT. So now for putting um, all four of these layers at the same time, you can literally just use the same exact algorithm from like this, and it just somehow works. Perfect, just like that. Then we'll um, fix that. So we just have an adjacent swap here and make sure you fix the other layer so that you can see which way it is because here's a way to avoid um, RKT parity. So instead of having it like this and then just doing a T perm and then 50% of the time getting the RKT parity, if you just leave it with one corner solved just like this then it turns into an A perm and then you can just use the A perm algorithm like whichever case it is, because there's two different A perms. Um, and then just do the alg for like whichever case it is, and then you're all good. And boom, no RKT parity, and then just um, solve the puzzle. So if you know this PBL algorithm for adjacent opposite, it uses single R moves, which unfortunately um, we can't do kind of on this. We have to keep orange, yellow separate. So that's kind of just like, you can only do R2 like this to keep orange yellow separate. Same dimensional analogy, you can't just go like that because then it doesn't work. Um, so instead of using this algorithm for adjacent opposite, uh, what you wanna do is hold the bar down here and then there's an algorithm with only R2 moves. It's literally just R2 U, R2 U prime until it solves itself. And if you do that on here, so let's just do this. So R2 U, R2, U prime, R2, U, R2, U prime, R2. So that's how you solve the opposite, opposite, adjacent, adjacent case. All right, now let's go even deeper into advanced case manipulation. So to avoid the amount of algorithms that you have to learn. So here we have an adjacent layer, an opposite layer, an adjacent layer, and another opposite layer. So what the heck are we gonna do? How can we set this up? Well, we know if we have two adjacent and two opposite, that's adjacent, adjacent, opposite, opposite, or I guess opposite, opposite, adjacent, adjacent is what we like better. So what we can actually do is really cool. We could just split apart the layers and then hold it like this. And then I guess we can do a Y2 here and we'll just move this red layer and this orange layer to opposite sides. And now that creates an adjacent adjacent on this cell and an opposite opposite on this cell. 
even though they have like different layers. See, orange is down here and up here and red is in there. That's kind of cool. But we have the two bars, just one of them is from the red layer, one of them is from the orange layer. And then we can just do the algorithm. And then at the end, we just need to restack the bars. So something like this, and then there you go. So you can just restack any layers you want. If you have like some weird cases and if swapping the layers would be better, then you can do that. So if you have just on one cell here, a solved layer and an opposite layer, you can see how doing an R2, U2 mixes it up, but also it makes it have an adjacent swap on the bottom and an adjacent swap on the top. So when it needed to be opposite before, like these two switch, we made it so that if we just switch these two and these two at the same time, by bringing it like this, just R2, U2, we can turn a cell with solved and opposite into adjacent, adjacent. And it's only one, two half moves, which when you're doing RKT, cancel out. So that's a perfect way to reduce the amount of algorithms you ever need to learn. So this cell has adjacent, adjacent, and this cell has opposite solved. Um, what we can do is simply just do the R2, U2 with RKT. And as you can see, this cell returns to its state, and then we have the adjacent swap um, here and here. So these are the bars, even though we messed up the white and yellow, but that's perfectly okay. So we can just do the algorithm. And now we just have to undo the transformation, which was only two moves. Make sure you do the correct two moves though, you know? So just like this, I guess. So that's one aspect of advanced case manipulation. If you have opposite and solve, you can just do two quick moves to turn it into adjacent adjacent, which is very nice. But that is not where advanced case manipulation ends. Let's say you just got finished um, making the white and yellow cells pseudo, so you could do permute all four layers later, PBLBC. Instead of orienting the same colors, you can literally orient just a different color if you want to. Like if the case is better for here, we see we have um, a green blue pseudo side oriented. And then on this, we just have, um, so then we can just do the F sexy F prime algorithm. And now when you're recognizing it, it's more difficult, I'd definitely say, because this one you have white, yellow oriented, this one you have green, blue oriented. So that can be kind of crazy. So I hope that this video was helpful. It was kind of an unstructured ramble. Sorry if it didn't make much sense, but I tried to give an overview of my new technique for orienting the first side and then why I like um, four corners unoriented as my um, case and then using the uh, Guimon algorithms for 2x2 two two OLL because they're a few moves shorter even though I haven't finished learning them yet before orienting the second cell. And then the new technique of permuting four layers at the same time similar to Ortega is, is cool but there's a lot more algorithms because obviously there's more layers but using advanced case manipulation and orienting different colors and sliding the layers around, you can manipulate it pretty well. So you don't have to learn all the algorithms. I only know maybe like four or five algorithms for it right now, which is cool. And I'm still like pretty fast, which is awesome. So I can't wait to see like how this method is um, pushed to its limits. In, um, yeah. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to the PBLBC algorithms if you wanna take a look at that and um, help out with the algs if you'd like to do that too. It's still not finished. It's pretty far from finished actually, but there's some techniques in there like avoiding RKT parity for certain cases and it's super cool. All right, don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, you can buy these uh, cool two by twos at thecubicle.com using discount code Rowan to save 5% off. And then I'm gonna make some like advanced example solves videos because I've seen YouTubers do that for like advanced solves. I'm gonna make some um, example solves video in the future. So stay tuned for that, subscribe to my channel and have a good day.